Yagaho, everyone. We are back for one more time with the Utah Jasmine and the Global Battle Association. This is Coach Koshiro's retirement game from the GBA Season 7 Week 4. And if, you, uh, if you're startled by that, you probably didn't follow the news over the past week. So you might want to go back and watch that. Uh, we might say some words on it at the end of the video. Uh, but, yeah, this will be the last GBA battle that we upload. Uh, not League Play in general, but last GBA video that we upload and it's going to be Jasmine Pelipper's take four. Uh, if you're curious uh, why I wanted to go out against John, uh, well Jasmine Pelipper's has been a, a very nice and storied uh, rivalry over the last couple of times that John and I have played. The first time in season two was kind of my first landmark victory in the league. Uh, my only victory prior to that was against uh, Kyle and the Chicago Grand Bulls and everyone beat them that season. So. Uh, and that game was was really, really special. Uh, DC multiple times. We had to end up finishing it on Showdown. That was, I think, actually the first game I had ever played on Showdown at all. So there was that. And uh, that was the birth of Scarf Cloister. Uh, it was really the, like, the beginning of the, the, the Cooper John romance type stuff going on. Sorry, Nikki. Uh, uh, and then we had the two games in Season 4 uh, where one was an absolute, like, uh, crush, one of the most crushing losses I've ever had. Uh, and then we had the other one, which was where I was messing around, and we had Sorcerer Agron and still won. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so yeah, lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff. And uh, here we go to see if uh, either we can go out with a win or if we can end this season, end this series uh, at 2-2. Uh, John has, I think, one of the best teams in the league. Uh, easy, I think, top five, probably top three. Um, a lot of stuff scares me a lot. To the point that I actually had to pick up some guys in free agency just to, you know, feel like I had a chance to deal with it. Um, so, uh, what all is on his team? He's got his Sea Captain is Infernape, which is a pretty good choice for Sea Captain. It was actually on my radar too. Uh, he's got Jolteon, Sneasel, Scolipede, Sigalith, Porygon 2, uh, Yuxi, Melodic, Gudra, Tapabulu, and Skarmory. So one of the first things I noticed was uh, his slowest poke is Skarmory at base 70. That's that like outs that already outspeeds like half my team. <laughs> um, so that's not good, and uh, consequently uh, we're going to have to adjust uh, what we bring to compensate for that. So by now I hope we've gotten this rigmarole relatively down pat. So uh, here we go. Uh, we're going to see what I brought for, uh, I think the, the, the text when I clicked this said, you'll battle with your GBA finale. And I was like, wow, that kind of like, right in the heart, you know? So, uh, that's what the game told me. Was, the game was reinforcing it. Yeah, Cooper, this is your last game. For the first time, I actually had the in-game audio actually playing through this. I didn't record audio on the video, but uh, I usually play with the game muted. Uh, this is actually one of the first, if not only, games I've played with the uh, with the audio uh, intact and I might actually do that for one of our background music tracks for this video uh, for which one I use so here we go with the team we have Manaphy, Zapdos, Reuniclus, Scrafty, Klefki and the new acquisition Golbat so Lantern was the other Pope that we picked up uh, dropping Comfe for and we'll see if that ends up to be okay or not um, so as for what everyone's got I'm gonna try to go a little bit more in depth slightly uh, than I usually do, since this is the last game, of course. Uh, so, Manaphy, uh, I was not comfy bringing Tail Glow, because, and, well, Tail Glow would sort of, I think, force the, uh, force the, uh, the Z rain, because I need to be able to outspeed Jolteon, of course, otherwise it's going to, uh, wreck me. I, I'm mostly afraid of, like, Specs Jolteon, especially with this squad that I brought, uh, is going to absolutely destroy this team. I don't really have a switch in for it. I do have a Powdon, who's immune to Electric, and the new acquisition Lantern, also immune to Electric, is a fantastic, absolutely fantastic uh, Jolteon switch in. However, Lantern ended up not being brought uh, because it's kind of a momentum killer against Tapu Bulu. Um, yeah, even if I were to do some craziness, uh, there is no universe in which Woodhammer does not destroy Lantern. Granted, at least that's a lot of recoil damage, but even then, like, he can, he can probably just stick to Horn Leech. So. Uh, one of the things with this team is I want, you know, Bulu doesn't get to come in and get too awfully much, you know, momentum off for free. Uh, you do see, of course, in there we got the the, uh, the Bulu counter uh, with Golbat, but uh, that was one of the reasons that we didn't bring that. And uh, also, uh, well, you see the, the thing there. We got, so we got Columbine because that'll actually let us live hits from Jolteon, at least one anyway. 
Uh, we got the, pretty much the standard three attacks on Manaphy, Surf, Ice Beam, Energy Ball. Um, should be pretty obvious who those are each for. Uh, the tw small twist, we have Iceum Z. Uh, this was part aesthetic and part logical. Uh, the aesthetic being that I didn't actually get to use Z Rain Manaphy last week. And since in the ZBS we have Z-Moves banned and may or may not unban them in the future, this has a strong chance to be the only Z-Move I ever click in competitive play. So, yeah, I want it to be Ice-type because Ice is my favorite type. So, uh, the logical reason for it, of course, uh, is for Tapu Bulu um, to make sure after one combine we can definitely get him down uh, with the uh, Sub-Zero Slammer, and uh, as well as Gudra, who I mean, obviously has giant special defense. Um, if we can get it... I think like two plus two calm mines and I and uh, Sub Zero Slammer should take it out unless it's Assault Vest probably. So that's kind of what's going on with Manaphy there. We have enough speed to outspeed a Jolly Tapu Bulu, and then I think the rest I just threw into HP. We, we can't not have Zapdos, right? <laughs> Zapdos is it, it, Zapdos is not the mascot, but he may as well be the mascot. Uh, I love you, Zapdos. So we got Thunderbolt and Toxic, which is becoming like my favorite pair of attacks to run on him. Remember guys, Toxic is an offensive move, if you guys didn't know, Toxic is offensive, well this was defensive. Uh, the defenses ended up being such that I don't, I think my only calm Zapdos had static, uh, and as you can see there, I wanted to run Defog on Zapdos, which is funny because I drafted Golbat in part to be a Defogger, uh, you can see the Defog is not on Golbat, so yeah. Uh, we have Defog on Zapdos, uh, just because I felt like the Golbat set was too tight and I needed Defog somewhere, um, like I'm tired of not having Hazard removal. Uh, so we end up having mixed defenses because he's bold with whatever, like, the stat jump that hits 192 is. Um, you guys know by now I always run, it's like 220 HP EVs on Zapdos to hit that lefty's number plus one. Uh, and then the rest into Spadef, which put them right at, like, it was like 192 and 190. So it, I was intending to make it more phys uh, more specially defensive, but uh, I think I kind of ended up to make it equal. So there's that. Um, so that's Zapdos. Uh, Zapdos does what Zapdos does. It's best bird. So, so Reuniclus is the first uh, major counterpart or counteracting to John's tremendous speed advantage um, that he's got uh, over my team. Which, um, yeah, base 70 is freaking slow as dude. Like, what the heck? Um, so Reuniclus has Trick Room to completely flip the script, and we got two Trick Room sweepers there, kind of in the middle. Who, uh, well, Scrafty's not really a Trick Room Sweeper, but when Scrafty is slower than everything on the opposing team, it may as well be a Trick Room Sweeper. Um, so, uh, unlike the previous weeks, this one is very much offensive. We have Regenerator in Life War, which seems a bit odd, um, because obviously Magic Guard pairs very well with, uh, Life Orb. Um, but Regenerator kind of does too. I mean, you know, look at Nian Shao and other guy, Quarantine, that we just beat last week. Um, the main reason for Regenerator is I don't have space. Or it's not so much I don't have space, I don't have time to be in there and click Recover uh, with Reuni. So he's going to need to come in there, set up Trick Room, you know, maybe he bounces out to somebody else. Um, but, you know, Life Orb to make sure you can hit as hard as possible. And, you know, and Regenerator also co recovers off that Life Orb damage as well. So uh, his EVs are such, obviously, ma Modest Max Special Attack, because I want to hit as hard as possible. Um, I don't have Combine Boost, so, you know, we just got to hit as hard as we can, just raw. Um, 199 HP at level 50 to, you know, do life orb stuff as you do, only take 19 points instead of 200. Uh, and then the rest of the EV is thrown into special defense. I actually did breed for Hidden Power Fire, and shout out to Hyper Training, because you can probably see the level 100s that we have here. Those are the guys that are hyper trained, if that wasn't uh, already obvious. So yeah, we Hyper Training basically just let me just breed whatever, just what, you know, just breed random Solosis, and then get one with Hidden Power Fire, and then just, you know, I think I had it... I believe I actually bred it with Power Band. I didn't use Destiny Knot just to make sure you had the 31 Spadef. Uh, and then I only needed to max out, what, HP, Defense, and Spatak. So I only needed three bottle, bottle caps. So a little in, uh, process behind uh, the development of Reuniclus this week. Uh, that's that. So we got Scrafty coming back again. I'm freaking loving Scrafty, guys. Um, what, another, well, one of the main purposes... Uh, oh, I forgot to mention that on Manaphy, too. Uh, with ICMZ, I believe it all it does, like, the Mega Stones, where Knock Off does not get the bonus damage, making Manaphy a very appealing switch in to Sneasel, uh, resisting, you know, the Ice Stab, obviously, and then, you know, not taking too much from Knock Off. Uh, also taking not too much from Knock Off, uh, his Scrafty, especially after Intimidate. Uh, quad-resisting Knock Off is a great thing. 
and uh, this has what Dragon Dance. We, we have Dragon Dance. Dragon Dance was actually almost a throwaway move on it because uh, it was intended to kind of be a Trick Room Sweeper, but I decided, eh, it would be nice at some point too if I get a chance, you know, against Sneasel, um, against some other guys to pull the Dragon Dance. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to outspeed Tapu Bulu uh, because Scrafty does get Poison Jab, which uh, I was kind of wanting to maybe bring Breloom, but Breloom, for whatever reason, despite being a mushroom that, you know, has Poison Heal that is based on kind of like on a boxer it doesn't know a move that is those two things combined poison and jabbing it it doesn't know what <laughs> so scrafty does know poison jab though um i believe this might be the first time i'm running high jump kick is the only fighting stab which i am loath to do but i you know kind of need that high base power stab move uh, as much as possible i believe we are adamant max uh with the rest of the evs after the speed needed to outspeed jolly bulu uh thrown into hp for additional bulk, and I think we actually have leftovers because I want that, you know, extra longevity. Um, and yeah, I, d I don't have, I don't have a uh, little shed skin, so if we get burned, it's gonna be a bad time. Um, but we can maybe make do. So Klefki is bringing back something. Post in the comments. Post. I give you permission this one time to post before you watch the full video. Uh, post in the comments right now if you know what full incense does before watching and listening to me explain what it does so well the, the sheer fact that I have switcheroo there probably might be a bit of a uh, <laughs> might be a bit of a tell um, but yeah so we have switcheroo full incense uh, which is the same thing as lagging tail um, but part of the mind games that I have going on this week is that like you know we have swagger and bright powder lift the fates to side right so there's lax incense which Meant make a note, Lax Incense is the one for Why Not, Full Incense is the one for Munchlax. It's very confusing, guys, I know. So those are easy to mix up. They're, they're, they're sprites in the bag even look the same. So uh, so we are going to be switcherooing Full Incense, which is the same as Lagging Tail. I'm hoping he won't know what Full Incense does, uh, or at least have to look it up uh, mid-game. Uh, so that's, a, that's, that's the reason for doing that instead of Lagging Tail. Um, but if you don't know what it does, again, uh, th those things, they... They effectively make your speed stat zero. You always go last in your priority bracket. A thing I had to confirm was that you still go last even if Trick Room is up. So I can swap this over to Jolteon. In fact, if he if he has Jolteon, I'm probably starting out with Klefki expecting the Jolteon lead. Um, I'd love to get Bulu slowed. I'd love to get Scolipede, you know, if I get some speed boost up slowed. I, yeah, I did say his thing. Uh, Infernape. So I would love to get all those things just slower than my whole team. Would be amazing. So that's the point of Klefki this week is the What's this guy that's outspeeding and destroying my team? You know, make it dirt slow. Uh, on top of that, we've got some other general quite few utility stuff. We've got spikes and light screen. Uh, I don't know how much... The main point is switcheroo, but, you know, spikes always good to maybe toss up there. He's got what? He's got storm for defog, uh, which I'm certainly going to expect to come. Uh, and then play rough because, uh, of course, dark types like Sneasel are immune to switcheroo. Um, so play rough, however, should handle Sneasel pretty well being stabbed and hitting its weaker defense. Uh, because of running light screen, uh, we have most of the EVs into physical defense, so um, it was kind of a toss-up between light screen and reflect, and in the end I decided Jolteon's going to be the bigger problem. Um, I need to make sure that Jolteon doesn't destroy me. Also, Infernape often will run Fire Blast over uh, Flare Blitz, but yeah, it can be either or. It's a... Um, just overall, I feel like I can deal with the physical threats better, mostly with the next guy. Uh, and I want some more protection on the special side with light screen. So, brings us to our final guy, who is kind of the linchpin uh, of this squad. And uh, our new pickup, Golbat, Shademan.exe. Uh, running a... This was actually one of the first sets that popped in, into my mind. And this was the reason Defog got moved to Zapdos. So I've got Poison Fang and Heat Wave. If you don't know what Poison Fang is, because it's not that common a move, uh, it is... It's got like 50 base power. Um, however, new to, I think in 6th gen, it was up to a 50% chance to apply Toxic. So what this lets me do is bundle Toxic, as well as a move that does 50% to Tapu Bulu, hitting it 4x effective stab. Granted, it's Golbat doesn't have the best attack power and it's low base power, but it should still 2 at KO unless he's bulky. Um, so it lets me bundle both those moves into one. And, you know, it's a coin flip at Toxic. Um, generally, Golbat's able to, to hang in there and you'll eventually get that toxic to proc anyway um it also makes it untauntable if he's got like i don't know people with taunt i can still toxic guys with taunt so that's cool uh it's one of the best things to use against mega sableye uh we also have heat wave because otherwise it's mostly there for uh for skarm uh 
Uh, it also hits like Scolipede super effectively, uh, which Scolipede does get Rock Slide. Um, so I want to make sure you know we can um, you know we can hit that super effectively and you know put a, put a stop to uh, put a stop to any sh speed boost stuff going on. And yeah, that's pretty much the purpose of Heat Wave. Uh, we got Taunt because there's a couple of guys we want to be able to you know beat out 1v1. Uh, Melodic's in there able to recover, then that's going to be a bit of a problem. So we'll just taunt it to make sure it doesn't recover. Um, likewise, we can taunt Skarm. Uh, I wanted to run some speed in Golbat, perhaps to speed creep Yuxi. Uh, Golbat does have base 90 speed, but I decided, eh, it's just not worth it. I don't even know if Yuxi's going to come. Um, he might even, you know, creep, you know, even further up with Yuxi. Um, it's just, it was a little bit, I, I, I needed, needed that max, max defense, uh, cause there was a lot of razor edge calcs that just, it required max, max bold. They ended up going bold, we're, uh, we are mixed, uh, but because Poison Thing has the lower base power and it was still a 2 hit KO anyway, uh, we could afford the, uh, the minus 2 attack, uh, instead. So, uh, that is Golbat, uh, of course, you know, should, should go without saying that we have Roost and Eviolite, um, as, you know, I'm quite certain that most every goal bat ever uh, would have. So, that is the team uh, that we have. Just about, well, not down to the exact EVs, but uh, good enough that uh, you can probably suss out approximately what the EVs are. Uh, so, we will go ahead and look at what John brought, and we see Tapabulu, Porygon Z, Yuxi, Melodic, Gudra, Sneasel. Oh my word, he did not bring Jolteon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I was definitely... I was kind of hoping that Jolteon, you know, may be Lantern, just the presence of Lantern uh, would deter Jolteon, and I don't know if it did or not, but uh, I don't see Jolteon, and uh, that now gets me like, uh, what am I going to lead with, because I was I was so in on the, you know, lead off Clucky versus Jolteon, you know, he just bolts, which is fine, whatever, it's not like I can prankster T-wave it, and uh, I get it, you know, psh, you know, dirt slow, and then it's no longer a threat. Granted, I probably steal the choice specs too. I guess that then gives me some, uh, some choice specs to trick somebody else in that regard, but it uh, doesn't matter because Jolteon we see not brought, so uh, of course Bulu is too good to not bring. Uh, Sneasel does a number on all my birds, so that's a problem. Melodic is, you know, kind of like Zapdos for me. It's just, you know, it's there and it's really freaking good and it has instant recovery. Uh, we got Porygon Z. I'm not specifically sure why. It looks like, I, I don't feel like I have a massive weakness to PZ. I guess is the thing. Uh, Bolt Beam in general is very good. Um, so there's that. I'm going to assume it's going to have Bolt Beam and Dry Attack and uh, potentially some stuff. But uh, if it gets too out of hand and, you know, wants to set up and with, you know, Double Dance or whatever, uh, again, we do have Klepki 2, Switcheroo, and then it's slow, and then, you know, Aaron can deal with it. So uh, there's that. And Yuxi, as soon as I see Yuxi, I'm going to assume it's going to be the lead, uh, which makes me want to, I guess, lead out with Zapdos. Um, and we can go from there. If it rocks, I can defog. I'm gonna hope it doesn't trick and yawn like Malice's uh, leadoff UC set always does to me. Um, but yeah, Gudra, we want to get Toxic ASAP for sure. Um, and yeah, we'll see how we can deal with it. Obviously, Golbat is the Bulu switch in. That's a very, very obvious Bulu switch in. However, at the same time, um, even if he does predict that and go for doubles, Golbat is generally solid enough against the rest of the team. Like, it's not gonna get one at KO'd. Um, Sneasel might be a bit of a problem, but I have two, arguably three, quality Sneasel switch-ins. Uh, we got Klefki to take either one, and we've got Intimidate Scrafty to, you know, definitely take knockoffs all day. Um, and then we've got Manaphy who doesn't have instant, doesn't have any form of recovery, um, and, you know, we'll get, will not enjoy taking knockoff, but it'll take it due to having, you know, the Z-Crystal, so. That is, uh, that is the look, outlook, uh, for the game right now and uh, we'll see who we lead with and we'll see how it goes and uh, this is got this video is gonna be like not super sped up because I kind of intentionally want to make it long so uh, to give you guys as, as long uh, long a, uh, a game portion as we can and uh, we'll see if it's a good one I think it's gonna be a really good one all right so the whole Klefki and Jolteon thing didn't work out so who do we lead when I don't know who to lead with go with the best bird Zapdos gonna lead out in our final game, lead us, lead us the way. Lead us on our way, Zapdos, in our final game. So he is indeed going to lead out with Yuxi, which, you know, it's a pretty common guy, because he, he's got Stealth Rock and U-Turn and all that stuff that Cresselia does not have. So indeed he does want to set up Stealth Rock, and that's the thing that's kind of bulky and doesn't have any form of recovery outside Leftover, so I'm definitely interested in getting that toxic 
Uh, thankfully, he does not use trick or anything like that, so I thought I could have been really bad. But uh, instead, we do just get him toxic and cool. Um, he's got rocks up. I don't want rocks to stay up, so I'm going to defog. And he knocks off leftovers, which is not a... I mean, it's, it's a deal, but it's uh, certainly better than getting Zapdos tricked, so works for me. Uh, so right here, I expect he's just going to U-turn out. We do, by the way, see that Uxie's faster, which means he did have speed investment, which me means that speed creeping with gold, that would have been a horrible idea. Uh, so I think he's just going to probably U-turn here, and if I had to guess, into Gudra, because Gudra can take pretty much any hit from those. Uh, unfortunately, he wants to set up rocks again, so I guess it was potential for a waste to turn there either way. Um, Thunderbolt would have been like a middle ground play, but it's a, kind of a bad middle ground play. Um, so now I'm kind of compelled to defog, and you know, he, he is going to U-turn out into somebody. Um, but, I mean, if I had clicked defog predicting rocks and he had you know, U-turned instead, it would have been equally silly. So I'm not really going to fault myself too much from that. But uh, anyway, he doesn't want to go into Gudra. He wants to go into the rubber dub 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 duck So that's going to be... Uh, yeah, we're just going to get rocks off the field. And I don't have a great switch in to this because I don't have Blissey. So uh, I do have a normal resist, though, in the form of Plefki. Uh, unfortunately, it is more physically defensive because of you know, having a light screen. So uh, we are going to go into Klefki, though, and see what he wants to do. This is also somebody I'm definitely interested uh, in getting the full incense tricked onto. And hey, wouldn't you know it, <laughs> he tricks it over to himself for me. Uh, and gives me a scarf, and right about now, I'm wondering, I wonder if he knows what full incense does, because I brought it, and, Cle you know, Klefki's a little, you know, tricksy, tri tricksy guy, and I wonder if he's gonna mix it up with lax incense, um, because he's the one who tricked it, not me. If I trick it over to him, he knows it's gotta be something bad, but because he tricked it over to himself, he might think it's something that's, you know, kinda good? Uh, regardless, I have a Scarf Klefki, so that's a thing. Um, it means I can switch Ruid off to somebody else later on, but right now I'm just going to set up a light screen. Uh, I'm just going to commit to, you know, let me just get light screen up, and then from there I can switch, and if, you know, if he wants to stay in, uh, if that PZ is now slower than my entire team, uh, light screen up, I sh should be able to handle it okay with somebody. So, get a light screen up against Melodic, and that's pretty, pretty alright. Uh, we're going to be able to switch into somebody and not take too much damage from an attack, so we're going to go into Reunion, get some Trick Rooms up, and see how we go, and now John, we're going to have to have a talking to here. You get a critical hit through my light screen, which I just noticed, by the way, um, and you burn me. Now, I, I, I thought we were friends, John, and I, then I see you run this move that only gets ran because people, you, you're just hoping for hacks. Like, who would run a move that just, you should rely on hacks and just hacks out your opponent when there's a safe, reliable alternative that's stronger in the form of Surf? Just, it's just completely disrespectful, man. Like, I don't know what to think about you anymore, but <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, so we are gonna click. Uh, we are gonna click the trick room here, of course, as uh, we do have regenerator to you know heal off some of that egregious, egregious damage from that awful move. Uh, but uh, we are gonna get trick room up here as Tapu comes in and gonna set up grassy surge, which is at least gonna negate the burn damage, which is kind of okay because I uh, don't have leftovers on the screen, of course, or any way to heal it outside of regenerator. So. Uh, grassy Terrain, of course, being that double-edged sword that it is, so... Uh, so here, Golbat Switch is super obvious. I do have HP Fire, but that's not gonna kill Bulu from full. Uh, in fact, I'm, I don't know that it would do, but maybe about 50% to it, because uh, the special defense is a little bit lower, but it's still, like, in the 90s, right? So, yeah, uh, it's a pretty obvious switch that we're gonna make into Golbats. Uh, you can see I already clicked my move. Uh, he's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. As, uh, there's, I mean, uh, Bulu does get a lot Stone Edge, so there, there is that, uh, which, this Reunion being mostly specially defensive, depending if he's, like, CB, like, CB Stone Edge might actually kill from here, uh, but I'm certainly just gonna go right into the Golbat, and, uh, he is gonna make the double switch predicting, I guess predicting Golbat, what else would I go into, uh, and go back into Milo, so, um, I, however, I'm also okay with this, because this Golbat is kind of built to 1v1 Milo, so, I'm... Uh, yeah, we're gonna taunt eventually. Uh, he's gonna scald again, and it's gonna get, you know, another burn, because that's what, that's what happens when you run moves that, you know, get hacks, and, uh, speaking of moves that, that's not, well, Poison Fang's not really even hacks, that's a coin flip, like, it's a, it's a coin flip, and I'm the one who's expending the turn to use the move, so, there's that. Uh, but at least we do get the Poison Fang Toxic applied on there, so Melodic is Toxic. It does activate Marvel Scale, so, or, assuming he has Marvel Scale, which is likely, uh, I don't have any Intimidators, I think. 
uh, to make competitive be worth using, and uh, it's not going to use Cute Charm. So Marvel Scale is pretty solidly what's going to be there. So anyway, at least he's toxic. You know, we can wear him down on a timer. Uh, obviously, EV Light guys don't like having any form of passive uh, passive damage, and uh, also Golbat can't take advantage of the grassy terrain. So at least not normally. Uh, so I'm just going to taunt him here to make sure we prevent any form of recovery or anything like that. And this guy wants to come in, at least he's taunted now, so we're going to be able to prevent Stealth Rock. Uh, right about now I'm calcing, I wonder how much, you know, Psychic does if he's got Stab Psychic. We've seen three of the moves, and then I realize, wait a minute, he's got Knock Off. I, I, <laughs> I am not risking uh, Golbat getting Eviolite knocked off uh, whatsoever. Uh, Zapdos seems to be a pretty solid switch in. Uh, it's already got the, you know, the item knocked off, so this is not going to be doing too awful much. Uh, if it is going to be a, I believe, is Trick, I think Trick Room is still up right now, but I think this may be the last turn of it. Yeah, there is one turn you saw there uh, of Trick Room left. Uh, it does kind of count down, which I find kind of strange in some ways, but uh, this is going to come in, and uh, he's just going to U-turn out. So we have been, we had a ton of switches, we have a ton of switches in this game going on right now, as uh, he's going to U-turn out and drop in somebody's, I believe, Trick, yeah, tri I just said Trick Room does uh, wear this turn. And uh, I think he's going to drop in the PZ again, actually, uh, which, you know, despite Trick Room now wearing off, it's still going to be slower than everything. And uh, I think I'm going to go into here, going to go into Clucky again. And this time, I'm thinking maybe let's just go ahead and go in for Spikes, because at this point in the game, he has done a lot of switching. So if that's going to be the direction this game goes, I'm definitely going to want Hazards up. Uh, because he didn't bring Skarm, by the way, uh, he, uh, uh, that was one of the first things I said that I did, or saw in the game that I didn't say previously, was like, where's the defog? Where's the hazard removal? There is no hazard removal. So that means we can come in here with Klefki, and, uh, we're gonna take some damage from Tri-Attack now, because that's the first time he's actually gone for Tri-Attack. And, uh, I'm locked into it, but I also know that this PZ is not a threat to set up and sweep me. It, it's not gonna, you know, if it's Double Dance, uh, Nasty Plot Agility, it doesn't matter. He's got... Uh, full incense, so I can always just come in and immediately just kill him with um, with high jump kick and scrappy. So uh, it's not going to be any sort of a threat to sweep. So I'm just going to be good to just stay in here and uh, click spikes. Uh, though I do take a while thinking about do I want to go ahead and set up spikes now? Do I want to get up another light screen? Do I want to do some something else? Uh, but he's going to go into this guy, which I'm pretty confident is also not going to be hitting Clefty. He's going to be taking toxic damage. So. Uh, Toxic and lefties cancel out right there, and I've got the first layer of spikes. And as I go to click the second layer, I realize, wait a minute, I kind of don't want rocks on the field, and my only form of removal is defog. Um, so I decided, well, I'm, whatever, I'm just going to click it again. You know, if Dose is taking 25%, at least everything on his side, except for Yuxi, uh, is taking also taking 25% just for switching in. So that sort of makes up for me having two guys weak to Stealth Rock, if his effectively entire team is weak to Stealth Rock. Um, so we are going to go ahead and get up the third layer as he's going to uh, jump back in here now that he's got Stealth Rock set up, which I guess was the point of going into Uxie. And uh, right here is where the whole full instance thing comes into play, because ordinarily I might be like, ah, I can't risk him setting up and I would go into somebody, but because of having, you know, he's going to be slower than everybody, which I don't think he's had a turn. Yeah, I don't think he's actually had a turn to prove that he's slower yet because it's always been switches or prankster stuff going on so that's going to be a prankster stuff going on here um so here i'm mulling to make sure like is this is this definitely safe and yes i'm pretty sure this is going to be safe uh he's no threat to set up i'm just going to go ahead and let go ahead and let clef he die here uh this was kind of my switch in to the guy so yeah there i'm making sure i'm scarf apparently uh, we're just going to continue to click spikes pretty much until Klefki dies, and uh, if he wants to go into somebody else and maybe set up, then that's a thing. And what does he have to set up with? I'm not actually quite sure off the top of my head. Uh, maybe like a Swords Dance Sneasel, I guess, uh, would be a thing. So that would be a thing that would definitely be worth uh, keeping Klefki around for. Uh, but uh, as it seems to be oftentimes, uh, Klefki ends up to be the, the first first guy to go down for the, uh, for the purpose of getting some momentum and some other guys and uh, kind of hopefully starting to break the game open because uh, it's still 6-6 until, until right then but uh, we got max layers of spikes and uh, I'm the only one who can remove them so I'm gonna say you know what I think I'm gonna favor just keeping my spikes up over not keeping my spikes up so so Scrafty's gonna come in and I would kind of like to set up DD or something like that but I want to make sure I kill this PZ if he wants to stay in. Um, 
I'm sure he doesn't think he can kill me not from full, um, but you know, I am going to be outspeeding it here if he does stay in, and I would rather just go ahead and take the certain KO. Uh, if it wants to come back in, it's going to take 25%, so somebody's going to take 25% for switching in, uh, plus some high jump kick damage, and uh, we'll see who it wants to be. Uh, part of me really wants to click DD in case, you know, several other guys come in, but in case Bulu comes in, in case, it's pretty much in case anybody comes in, uh, I'd rather click DD, but I, I, can't, I do not want to risk it. Uh, having Strafty in good HP, I am going to recover off the uh, Stealth Rock damage with lefties right here, of course. So uh, HJK comes in, and oh, it would have been so nice to go ahead and DD up and then get a knockoff and go ahead and kill Yuxi. Uh, but it's not the case, so... Oh well. Uh, I, still don't know, I still don't know much about Bulu. Um, I, I, just, I, I don't know enough about what his item is yet, because he's uh, he hasn't actually attacked with it, he's just brought it in and then immediately double-switched out. So, HJK does some decent damage to Yuxi, uh, resistant of course, and here, uh, Yuxi does get Dazzling Gleam, I've seen three of his moves being U-Turn, uh, Stealth Rock, and the other one, U-Turn, Stealth Rock, and Knock Off, um, so I'm not fearing any of those, however, I am kind of fearing Dazzling Gleam, it's probably only going to do about 50%, but uh, I, I want the knowledge on, you know, if, if he has it, he's going to go for it right here. Um, and, and, you know, and in the future we'll, we'll figure out what else it's going to be, and, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, just, just scouting for Dazzling Gleam here, and we're going to jump into Mega Man in case he goes knockoff or U-turn, whatever. Uh, he does indeed go knockoff, trying to just, basically just trying to remove the lefties and do approximately two damage. So, this, uh, this might actually be our chance right here. Uh, we are, we are going to be able to get off a Calm Mind, and, uh, if Wulu does want to switch in right away, I should be able to take it out with the plus one... Sub-Zero Slammer, and uh, he's going to stay in, and uh, he's also going to reveal his fourth move, so now I know Scrafty is completely safe against Yuxi, and uh, arguably set up fodder uh, for Scrafty, so I get Calm Mind, and now I'm going to be able to bag two Calm Minds, and this could be pretty good, because I think Sneasel's the only thing left on his team that outspeeds Manaphy, and I don't know that that's going to be able to do, you know, the 50-ish percent required with knockoff. Uh, it may well do, depending on, you know, its, uh, nature and item and EV spread. It's got, it's got to be max attack. Um, but yeah, I think we are, uh, it is, uh, 5, 5, 6 right now, and, uh, I think we are good to go in, uh, with Manaphy, and, uh, if this works out, we might be getting the 5-0 sweep here. Uh, he's gonna U-turn out, of course, to, uh, make sure he gets, uh, somebody in for free. And, uh, it's gonna be Bulu. So, once again... We are in this awkward situation where, hmm, the way he brings this in makes me think that it is Scarfed. Uh, the only way he's going to outspeed Manaphy is if it is Scarfed. But, just like last week against Cobalion, what does it mean for me long term if he is Scarfed? That's what I'm thinking right now. Uh, the Scarf is absolutely not going to catch me by surprise. Uh, it's definitely on the forefront of my mind. What, is the, what are the ramifications if he is Scarfed? It means that he is not going to be able to switch moves. Like, if Golbat comes in, it's just going to make... Golbat's going to be so much safer against it. Um, on top of that, uh, he's actually not going to be able to wood hammer my Zapdos as effectively because he's definitely going to outspeed my Zapdos as well. Um, I'm not going to roost, lose my flying type, and then, you know, get hit harder by wood hammer. So, I'm actually... If he's going to be a Scarf Bulu, I think that makes him so much easier to deal with for the rest of the stuff. I'm okay with it. And there's a little emote strip there, you know, getting ready for Scarf. And is he Scarf? Yeah, he's Scarf. So, man, if he goes down again, uh, doesn't get to do too awful much, but at least he does Wood Hammer, so that deals a, a chuffing bit of damage to him there. Uh, I don't know if he had Horn Leech or not, but Horn Leech probably would have killed. So, unfortunately, no Manaphy Sweep. Uh, the Manaphy Sweep that could have been, but uh, that's probably why he had Scarf Blue in the first place, was to make sure, uh, you know, to make sure Manaphy couldn't do, do something like that. Um, granted, Z Rain still would outsped, but then I only have the two coverage moves, as I mentioned, and you can deal with that a lot better. So, the one to go about here is, uh, it is our designated, you know, now I know for a fact he's scarfed, and that means he's certainly going to leave, and that means when he comes back in, he's going to be, you know, a little under 50% after Grassy Surge recovering. So, uh, I'm just going to take this opportunity to go ahead and get Golbat back to full life, because from full life, Golbat can live pretty much any hit. Uh, that he's going to take, and what I mean from full life, I mean at about 75%, uh, because that's what he's going to be at every time he comes in because of rocks. Um, so, uh, we know Golbat's going to be slower because we already saw the UCS and speed investment, and Golbat has no speed investment, so we're going to bounce out here, 
and here we go into, I believe we're going to be fine to go into Zapdos once again, just, you know, in case of knockoff, so, uh, that is indeed, I believe, what he goes for, yep, he does go knockoff, and, uh, we already lost our item on the first turn of the game, or second turn of the game, rather, so that's going to be fine. Uh, we know he has Psychic, because he was using it against Manaphy, but, again, this Zapdos is pretty balanced uh, defenses on both sides, so we're just going to roost up, and Psychic is going to kind of get close, but uh, we are going to roost here, and by the way, look at this at the end of the turn, guys. Uh, this is something I did not know I found out in the course of the game. Bam! Zapdos gets the Grassy Surge recovery because I roosted. I did not know it worked that way, and that's so cool. Uh, unfortunately, Grassy Surge goes away, so yeah, I'm pretty sure that the emote there is for the Grassy Surge recovery. I was like, man, that's so that was so cool to, to find out, so... Uh, this is obviously the first time I played against Grassy Terrain. So uh, he's going to U-turn out as uh, we ended up to get... I was expecting only to maybe get Dose back up to, a, you know, 75% or so, but we're going to get Dose back up to full, and that's pretty great. So the real Slime Shady comes out right now, and from full life, I'm thinking, hmm, how much does, like, Modest Specs Draco Meteor do? It's not a one-shot? I think I'm gonna be okay to go ahead and get this guy toxic. So I'm gonna click the toxic button after I think about it for a little while here and make sure it's like, because I'm kind of, you know, risking Zapdos here. I know I'm not gonna defog again. Um, he's still got Melodic hanging around that I would definitely like to have Thunderbolts to, you know, swing in on. Um, so there is that. But I think go ahead, going ahead and getting Goober toxic is probably gonna be worth it. Um, I don't have a Clefk anymore to, you know, cancel, uh, Dracos, but, uh, he Ice Beams and, oh, that's not Specs at all. <laughs> In fact, I don't even think that's Special Attack Invested, um, which leads me to believe it's maybe some sort of a defensive, perhaps, Assault Vest type sort of deal, and, uh, yeah, that didn't even do half, so that's gonna be a ruse. And that's gonna be some, uh, he does outspeed. Well, he's, he's, got, he's, got, he's got some speed investment too, though, so... I'm, I'm not quite sure, but it doesn't appear to have much of any special attack investment based on the amount that did. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get those back up to full life. And this guy's in again, and I don't have Puffy to go into on him, so... Nor do I want to switch Scrafty in, you know, just, uh, as it is. Scrafty's still looking to be pretty good, uh, against some guys if we can get some stuff to be going on, so... I decided at this point, I'm calculating how much Thunderbolt does, and it's like 49 to 55 thereabouts. Uh, that's really close. It's close enough that I think I'm okay to go for it. Um, he's not going to one-shot me, and at, at worst, I'll two it KO him. This PZ's kind of being a pain in my butt, even though I do outspeed it. And here comes T-Bolt, and nah, it was a... Uh, he, he, he probably had a little, a little bit of bulk investment there. You can certainly do that in league play and, uh, you know, save some EVs, and, uh, he also gets a crit on the Tri-Attack, which I think I probably would, I probably would have made the same play, um, maybe, I might have gone into Golbat to see if we can tank it, or I would have, I would have certainly calc it at least, but, uh, at this point I can't bring Dose back in due to rocks unless I want to fodder it off, and, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, nope, I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure PZ goes down, um, I guess he could... Well, he's dead to... Well, yeah, we're, we're, we're both dead to hazards on the way back in anyway. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and let Dose get, uh, get one more kill. And, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and get one more kill before uh, before it is retired as, uh, well, a member of the Koshiro coached Utah Jasmine anyway. Um, so Dose gets one more kill for us, and now pretty much anybody, well, maybe not anybody, uh, but multiple things can come... I think multiple things can come in. And uh, get the KO, and who's it gonna be? Yeah, it's gonna end up to be the Sneasel. So, Ice could be happening, Knockoff could be happening, Knockoff's not gonna miss, so I expect it's probably just gonna be Knockoff. Uh, he's certainly going to outspeed us and you know, see some stuff, so. And I'm not gonna switch because, well, I do actually have a Knockoff switch in in the form of Scrafty still, but it, eh, it, I don't really care to. Um, Death Fodder, I feel like, is not gonna be that important. Uh, at this point, because I do have such a solid Bulu switch in with Golbat. So uh, instead, I'd rather just go ahead and keep Scrafty in pristine condition. Um, and yeah, we, we did see it's not Life Orb, so that kind of narrows it down to either CB or maybe, you know, getting frisky with some Eviolite Sneasel going on. Uh, that's, I guess, a possibility. But uh, this sounds like a pretty free chance to Dragon Dance. Um, I don't know if Bulu 
I don't know if I outspeed Bulu with two Dragon Dances. I, it depends on what he was gunning to outspeed. I feel like I do not. I think I actually need the third one. Um, I'm not entirely sure why he goes into Yuxi here, perhaps just as a sack, but uh, I do want to Dragon Dance instead. And I'm, you know, we've already, now that we've seen all four of its moves, uh, the worst thing it's got to do to me is knock off my leftovers, so fine. Uh, I'm just going to Dragon Dance up again, and then I might out, I, I certainly had the possibility to outspeed Bulu, and I don't think he would risk it, so. Um, I, I really should have calculated before I did the narration, but uh, I, I, I don't even know if I'm sure in game with that. Well, it, it, I, I can't really know because I don't know what he was gunning to outspeed uh, with the Scarf Bulu. If he was just you know lowballing for mana and then put the rest in bulk, but I, I imagine he was you know going for the outspeed swallow uh, would be my guess. But, but I don't know. Potentially another Scarf. Do I even have a Scarf? It's around. I don't know. Maybe, perhaps outspeeding Scarf Poison would have been a thing too. Uh, so we do get up the second DD, and we're plus two, and I got high jump kick. And here's where, like, if you could argue the only hacks that I got so far was the poison fang, even though it's a coin flip, so I don't really count that as hacks. Um, <laughs> if he wasn't poisoned right here with Marvel scale, I'm pretty sure plus two high jump kick uh, from that range of HP would take him out. Uh, I run the calc without Marvel scale, just on the off chance he's competitive, and yeah, that should kill. Um... And I'm pretty sure either a Haze or a Dragon Tail, probably a Haze, is going to be incoming here. So, you know, there's no sense in, you know, trying to get frisky and setting up another one. So, HJK comes, does a butt-ton of damage to him, and indeed there is the Haze. I don't, at this point, care so much about removing the attack uh, buff. I kind of care more about removing the speed. Um, so, what I'm going to do here, because now I'm going to be slower than him, uh, most likely anyway. Um, unless, well, I'm faster than max speed Boogaloo, right? So... I don't know if he's got speed on the lot or not, but anyway, I'm, I'm going to go and DD up as uh, he'll, he'll either die to Toxic or he'll recover, and then, you know, maybe from there I can still take him out with a plus one high jump kick. We'll see. Uh, so I'm certainly going to go ahead and click DD here, and maybe he'll die to Toxic if he does. If he, if he attacks into me, he'll die to Toxic, certainly. So that's what we're going to do, and uh, he does have speed, so he's got some speed investment on here. And... Oh, no, never mind. I outspeed Bulu after the plus one. Um, so... Three for three on that move. That is just totally disrespectful, man, guys. My word. Anyway, he does that at Toxic, and uh, so we got plus one, plus one, uh, but we're burned. The good thing is, I feel like I don't actually... The burn damage drop might not actually matter because of this. That's still, I'd, I'd be pretty confident in range, especially for a plus one poison jab. So what I'm looking at right now is, all right, how much do we take from a... Woodhammer from a Scarf Bulu, and I think I can actually live one, uh, because he's Scarf as opposed to Bandit or, you know, otherwise attack boosting. Uh, however, it is definitely very, very close. Um, I still have my leftovers and Grassy Terrain, so I would be able to, you know, out-heal the burn, but I don't want to sacrifice all that life on Scrafty just yet. Not when I've got, you know, Golbat still here hanging around, able to do what he does. You know, if he forces Bulu to switch, then that's well and fine, because, you know, somebody's going to take 25% when they come back in. So, once again, kind of the same thing we've been been doing. I'm just going to, you know, bats at about 50%. I'm going to go ahead and roost and force this thing to, to switch out to somebody else. Yuxi is kind of really low, so I'd kind of like to, you know, hit it on the way in. But Yuxi is also kind of a free go back into Scrafty. So, there's that. Um, so, yeah. Now, however, what we're going to do instead... Uh, you can see match time is starting to approach 10 minutes. Uh, Yuxi has two moves that are actually super effective to psychic types, but that will not deter me from going into Reuniclus here. And at this point he's got four guys left, and I think I might be able to pull off a late game Trick Room Reuni sweep. Uh, so Knockoff is going to come and do a pretty decent chunk, and also get rid of my Life Orb, which is going to hurt my damage output, but because Life Orb is hurting me, it's going to be possibly helpful because he's uh, U-turn's going to be stronger at this point by 5 base power compared to a you know, unbuffed knockoff. So I'm just gonna, going to um, gonna click uh, Trick Room here and kind of hope as uh, we do indeed survive the U-turn. And uh, Grassy Terrain is going to be canceling out the burn damage, so that passive damage is not going to be taking me out as Scooter's going to come in. 
once again, you know, get whacked by spikes, and Trick Room comes up for the second time this game, and this is kind of my shot. Uh, if we can win while Trick Room's up, we'll be alright. If not, mm, this may or may not be game. So, once again, Grassy Terrain, Burn, canceling each other out. We're going to click Psy Shock, very easy decision. And, uh, depends on if he's, like, max defense with Assault Vest type stuff. And it picks up a KO. Nice. Uh, I don't think that was exactly the most favorable thing, but, uh, it's not like I had another move I was going to click. So, now Grassy Train does fade away, though. But I think we've got enough hits, uh, of Flame... Fl burn! Of Burn left to, uh, be able to go through things. I do have HP Fire, which should be able to take out Sneasel, which is now going to come in at 50%. And... The thing is, though, of course, uh, there's about a 99% chance that he has Ice Shard because, you know, Swallow exists. So, uh, Niki does have Ice Shard, which uh, is going to... It's going to put it into Reuniclus, but more importantly, it's kind of going to cost me a turn of Trick Room. Uh, because that was a turn of Trick Room that I didn't get to pull off an attack. Um, so here's Scrafty, and Trick Room is up, so there's kind of no point in, uh, in doing that. Uh, we are just going to go fire off some high jump kicks and rev it into high gear. Sound effects being added unintentionally to the game. Um, we are going to fire off HJK and just kind of hope it doesn't miss. Because, you know, it's what high jump kick likes to do. But uh, it's, uh, we're down 2-3 and it's coming down to the wire. We are coming close to five minutes left in the game. And I think, however, we are going to have enough time. Somebody's going to win it outright. He's mulling what he wants to do. Um, I've still got Golbat in the back and Sneasel is... Probably his best chance to be able to kill Golbat. Uh, at this point, he's got what UC and Blue in the back, so and uh, you know Psychic is not going to be doing mu too much to uh, to Golbat, especially before he gets knocked off. So um, so UC is going to come back in again, and we are going to HJK and take UC down, and we still got one turn of Trick Room left as uh, Burn and Lefties are canceling each other out. Thankfully, everything's so worn down that the uh, the attack drop from Burn is not really mattering at this point. I just have super effective moves. Uh, yeah, I have each one of my moves is super effective against a different thing he has left. I've got knockoff for Yuxi, which died to high jump kick. Uh, high jump kick, and I've got poison jab left for the Bulu. Um, so Bulu's gonna come in, and I'd almost say high jump kick could kill it there. Um, and the only reason I'd be tempted to go for it would be if he, to predict like a Sneasel to come in and waste another turn of Trick Room. Um, but I don't even think Sneasel would be able to take that. Plus. Uh, plus spike. So Bulu does indeed go down to Poison Jab. And the nice thing here is, I think we're going to be pretty okay. Um, and Scrafty's still got, you know, with the Grassy Surge recovery especially, um, I think we're going to be pretty fine to take what I now believe to be a, uh, most likely a Choice Bandit. Icicle Crash, and uh, all we got to do is take this and fire up High Jump Kick, and we'll be alright. We do have Golbat in the back in case something crazy happens, and here comes Icicle Crash! <laughs> and we flinch so and we're burned and this is not great so that's gonna be a two at ko maybe we can get an icicle crash miss miss on balance uh and we're not gonna get icicle crash miss, miss, miss. no mish for us and it's golbat against sneasel this is it this is the last turn he's got a miss or not kill and or not flinch uh Fun fact, the max roll for Jolly Band is 126, which is exactly what we've got left. If he's adamant, it's more like 50-50. Here comes Ice Crash, does not miss. What's going to happen, Golbat? Can you live it for me? Can you live it for me? Yes, you can on 10 HP and... Now, he no can take Heat Wave. That's right, Maycar. He cannot take the Heat Wave. Which uh, I don't think even I I think even Brave Bird might not have knocked him out there because of the burn. So having Heat Wave is absolutely essential. Busting that move out on the last turn of the game to pick up the 1-0 win and go out a winner in the GK. Oh my, what a game. That's what I told John as soon as the game ended. I've played 40 some odd games in this league and I don't think I would have any reservations about saying that is the best game that I have been a part of in the GBA. It's only been a couple of days since we played it so it hasn't had time to fully set in and compare it to everything but uh, if I were to make a top 10 list which I'm probably going to make some sort of a you know as the season goes on I'll probably 
finish it around the end of the season. Some kind of a uh, look back video, and that might have some uh, some top ten games played and other things like that, um, career stats for guys, that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, so I'll probably say for sure by then, but uh, I would not be surprised uh, if this game, especially with all the circumstances around it, uh, both of us knowing that it's going to be my last game and uh, the sentimentality of being able to still use Zapdos you know, in the last game, I uh, would not be surprised if this one does indeed end up to claim uh, the best game in the GBA I've ever played spot. So uh, another kind of contributing thing, uh, right after the game ended, now you guys know that I don't really ever complain seriously uh, about hacks because it's part of the game and if you can't embrace it then you're not going to have a good time playing this game. Go play something else, you're going to enjoy it a lot more. Um, with that being said, uh, and I hope no one thought I was actually you know, ragging on John for running Scald, um, though worth noting, uh, in the ZBS, my other league, which will be hopefully starting to come up you know, in the next month or so, um, again, we did ban Scald, and you know, maybe this video kind of shows maybe one of the reasons why, because that's just, that, that movie's silly. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so, but, yeah, <laughs> at the end of the game, I uh, went back to, uh, Diamond Brother Kamen, who maybe a few of you know, you know, from some of the ZBS videos, but otherwise most of you probably don't know him. Um, his kind of MO with, when he plays, which is not intentional, uh, but the way his games usually go is, Kamen's really freaking good, but, as I've said many times before, really, really good players get hacks, like, an substantially more <laughs> than uh, it feels like they should. And that's definitely the case with Kamen. Uh, all of his games seem to be like, he just gets this most ridiculous, silly hacks against him and always has the battle back from it, and usually does. And that's kind of what I felt like part of the way through this game. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the tipping point was. Maybe the burn on Golbat, um, which uh, going, you know, crit, getting a crit burn through a light screen on Reuniclus, which at least the attack drop didn't matter. Um, getting the, you know, the burn on Golbat, and then later getting the burn on Scrafty, you go, John clicked, burn, clicked Scald three times and got the burn every time. <laughs> and one of them was a crit through a light screen. Then there was, I think it was also a crit try attack that made it so that Zapdos couldn't leave. I probably still would have stayed in and T-bolted. Um, but it made it to where I couldn't withdraw dose and then maybe come in later on... Actually, not sure what I could have came, out, came in on at that point um, to to roost on, but... Uh, so that might not have mattered, but... You know, the, there was a crit there, and then there was at least, I think, there was one more, right? Oh, yeah, the last turn where, uh, you know, Icicle Crash came in and, uh, and flinched Scrafty to make it very scary there at the end, but uh, thankfully Golbat was able to pull through for us. Uh, and it was a, it was, it was, it was a great thing. It made, it made for a more exciting conclusion, and uh, really capped off what has been a fantastic career for me uh, in the GBA. I've definitely really enjoyed it. Unfortunately, it is kind of time to move on, uh, but you know, I will always like to rewind. And uh, I'm glad to say that all my videos are, you know, still up here, and they're certainly going to stay up. Um, one of the biggest regrets that I kind of have about season one is that uh, a lot of the best season the best season one videos uh, were definitely the ones that Gubs had. Uh, Gubs was kind of the channel that was like the analyst channel before analysts existed uh, because he would always upload like a few like a little a couple of days after Sunday and like kind of do the weekly recap and like the playoff race and all that stuff. Um, and unfortunately because you know Gubs likes to delete his channel all the time, unfortunately those are gone now so I'm, I'm very glad that I've got all my games uh, that are here and we can always go back and, uh, and watch them again. You know, and uh, like I said earlier, uh, I probably will be going back and, you know, maybe doing some, some kind of a, a retrospective video. Uh, we never got a Season 6 recap video, so that'll probably just kind of be bundled in with that. Um, yeah. Um, just to get, give you an idea of how, like, vividly this game was burned into my memory, um, the next day, uh, I, I was able to go in just knowing that the game took, it was like 47, 48 turns, something like that. Um, I was actually able to write down every play uh, in the game pretty much perfectly. I might have missed one move. Um, you know, the poke that was in, what move it used, uh, who outsped who on that turn, 
uh, you know, who switched into who, you know, did any, like, side effects of moves happen, um, <laughs> it was, it was kind of uncanny, um, turning points in the game, or I guess, pardon the pun, uh, key points in the game, uh, I'm not gonna do Pokemon of the game or anything like this, uh, we do have that little animation down there that I made, cause it's, it's cute, you know, carrying me off the field, uh, as a winner, feels good, feels good, um, key point in the game, I think, was turns like 14 to 16, where Klefki was setting up layers of spikes, and at that point I, I decided, you know what, he doesn't have his Skarm, so he can't get rid of hazards. I can, but I think I'm gonna be okay trading me three layers of spikes, him just Stealth Rock. Um, and then uh, proceeding to, of course, be Scarfed on the spikes while PZ slowly, I guess slowly, uh, three hit KOs, uh, Clef keep a Tri-Attack, and knowing that that was gonna be safe. Uh, because at that point, it was about a third of the way through the game. Uh, by that point, I think there was a sequence of about 10 turns where nine of them involved at least one side switching. So that kind of set the identity of this game, and uh, was what led me to go ahead and make that decision there. Uh, in fact, I've actually got a stat here that I made uh, after I listed off all the turns. There were, and these may be off by one, uh, there were 19 turns where there was a switch, 27 turns where there was not a switch by either side, um, there were six turns where there was a U-turn. I don't have that divided into U-turn on a switch versus U-turn on a stay in. Uh, and there was the one double switch where he uh, correctly predicted Golbat to come in on Bulu when I think went to Melodic. So, uh, there was that. Um, so, yeah. Um, probably, I, I guess, if I identify, like, the worst play I made during the game, I guess you could argue staying in with Manaphy on the Bulu that was kind of telegraphing that it was scarfed was a, a bad play to just lose Manaphy for nothing. Uh, however, very similar to last week, and I probably mentioned this in narration, um, against Cobalion, if, if the Bulu is scarfed, Manaphy's never going to be able to outspeed and kill it. Um, so that, like, decreases Manaphy's stock. Um, another thing that I know I didn't mention in narration was at that point I had kind of used up about half of Manaphy's HP to get set up that much, and if I'm about half HP, I can take a knockoff from Sneasel, um, as it did enough to be Jolly Band, I think it does about 40% thereabouts, um, if I have to come in, take rocks, and, you know, probably take another attack, uh, setting up again, then I'm not gonna be able to do that, so I, I felt like at that point, it was worth it to take the risk, and I didn't need Manaphy, that was what I asked myself, do I need Manaphy to win, the answer was no, uh, so with that, it was to, to me it was completely worth it to go ahead and risk it there uh, on him calling a bluff, because if he was bluffing, then it probably ends up at a 5-0 Manaphy sweep. Um, but of course it did not, and I'm kind of glad it did not, because uh, while I would like to you know the pass off the team uh, over to Necrosteva, who will be taking over for us as of next week, will be retaining the Utah Jasmine title. Um, so definitely go and check him out. Link, link will be in the description. Um, th this time it will be. Uh, I didn't have it in there last time because I didn't want to have his link in the description and kind of spoil it so uh but it wasn't linked as an annotation this time though it will be in the uh will be in the description so i definitely encourage you guys to go over there and check him out uh for the remaining eight games on the schedule plus hopefully playoffs uh so uh speaking of playoffs spoiler for the next 30 seconds to a minute um so we're three and one plus zero differential and we are leading the division right now because yeah, uh, Crimson and Tom, I think, are both at 2-2, two and two. and uh, I think Geo is 1-3, and three. sounds right. Uh, so we're actually going to be able to pass out over to over to Necrostevo at, uh, at leading the division at 3-1 and one plus 0, so um, let's, let, let leaving the team in good hands and uh, leaving uh, with a good record to, uh, to hopefully make a playoff run with and see if we can... Uh, See if the Jasmine can make it back to the finals uh, again and keep that silly joke going on. Uh, I just won't be with me. So I think we pretty much said at this point pretty much everything that uh, that I wanted to say, and we're coming up uh, on an hour, but we're gonna bust an hour because the, yeah, I, I kind of decided when I uh, I was only gonna do times two speed on the video that this this video is going over an hour because you guys wanted to go over an hour, right? It almost went to time. It didn't quite go to time. I'm sorry for you guys who wanted the six six timeout. Um, but I think what we got was legitimately uh, a better game than a 6-6 timeout, um, as much as we love our, our defense and our, um, you know, having just, just having nothing die, non-violent stuff going on. So, 
So yeah, I, I can't really imagine much of a better game, uh, if I'm being realistic, to uh, to be able to go out against a good buddy with. And uh, yeah, with with the quality of this game, uh, with everything that uh, was a part of this exit process, it I, it honestly could not have gone any better. Um, I was so worried about various parts of this. Um, you know, I knew you guys would be disappointed. Um, I was just hoping that you know things would be smooth enough, and uh, it has been super duper smooth. Um, Steve has been fantastic coming into the league, getting acclimated, uh, getting ready to play Geo next week, and yeah, just everyone everyone was welcoming. Nobody pitched a fit or anything like that, and uh, that was that was so great to see because I, I was sort of I was nervous that you know there might be some kerfluffles. Uh, but there were no kerfuffles, and then uh, I was also worried, like, man, I hope this last game is going to be a good one, because uh, it, it would sure suck if we got, like, 6-0 swept or something like that. And um, not the case. We were able to go out with a ve very tight game. Uh, as I mentioned before, probably going to go down as my favorite game in the league. And uh, what a great way to go out. So everything about this whole process, uh, everyone who's been involved in it, thank you so much. Um, it has definitely made this a, a lot less painful and nerve-wracking and uh, just generally stressful than uh, perhaps it could have been otherwise. So thank you to all the coaches in the league, um, everyone who was supportive and, un and understanding. And again, um, if, you, you know, if you're only interested in GBA, that's A-OK, -okay. I, I get you. Um, I hope you will go over and support uh, Steven's channel, as uh, you're not actually losing too awfully much. He's, he's from the same state I am, and he also breeds. So <laughs> uh, it's almost like very little has changed. So... Uh, I think you'll definitely enjoy uh, enjoy him as well. Uh, certainly, not could, certainly no one can replace me, uh, but that's fine because you don't need to if you just really like watching Cooper. Because I'm still going to be uploading ZBS games whenever we get that restarted. Hopefully, within a month or so, we'll uh, we'll get that back going underway. Again, that's a bi-weekly league. Uh, we'll be going up every other week once we do get it restarted. So, I do have a different team in that league, of course. Uh, so there's not any Zapdos because it's pre-bank era only. And uh, if you're if you weren't inter in weren't interested before, and maybe now you are, uh, we do have the draft and uh, some of the other videos up uh, that are elsewhere on the channel. So uh, there's that. That's probably the main thing that's going to be coming up on this channel uh, in the future. Again, I think I mentioned uh, towards probably the end of the season, I'm going to do some kind of a... I had already wanted to uh, last season, actually, in the off season, in addition to the Season 6 recap that didn't happen, uh, do like a GBA history type thing. So... Uh, there will this is definitely not going to be the last GBA related video uh, that comes up on the channel. Um, if you want to follow the Jasmine Twitter, um, in addition to tweeting out uh, Necrosivo's games, uh, I'll also tweet out uh, when that whenever I make that video, which again probably going to be towards the end of the season. Um, if you're active on the GBA fan Discord, I guess I should probably be linking that in the descriptions too. Um, I'll also uh, note when I put it on there. So. Uh, you definitely have not seen the last of League Play type content from me. It's just uh, you're not going to be seeing it every week from here on out. It's just uh, It stretches me just a little bit too thin. Um, in a way, you could say I kind of love the League too much because uh, it sort of just ends up to occupy like almost every waking moment, um, me thinking about stuff. So uh, sometimes, sometimes if you really love something, you got to let it go. And uh, that's kind of what the case has been. Uh, for this so uh, with that I think I'm pretty much out of things to say uh, I got a little credit scroll here at the end thank you guys for your support through uh, all the years we've been a part of we've been doing this league now since when the spring of 2014 and uh, I did miss the one season I hate that I missed the one season sometimes I really regret that I wasn't in season five uh, but there was kind of nothing I could do not having internet to be able to play um, through that time so that was uh, that was a thing and uh, it, it is at least nice that uh, this time uh, I'm not leaving because of, you know, woes with, uh, whoops, we don't have uh, internet at the house anymore because reasons. And uh, it's just more, you know, we're in, a, we're, in a, we're in a good spot, and that's why I'm leaving as opposed to I'm in a bad spot. So um, I know some of you have been hope, um, posting hoping that uh, I'll come back someday. Um, not to be super negative about it, but unless something, like, bad happens to me, uh, that's not going to be the case. So, um, I'm sure there'll be times where I think about coming back, but, um, I think I'm just going to be sated, uh, with the ZBS and, uh, wherever that grows, uh, from here on out. So, uh, with that, that was a pretty good voice crack. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to make the ZBS videos. We'll add in, uh, some of the bells and whistles, 
Uh, now that I'm going to be able to focus on that, we'll, maybe we'll bring back the stat pop-ups and stuff that you guys like. And uh, some other good stuff with that. So, with that, uh, I think I've rambled on long enough. I knew I wanted to ramble on at least, like, 12 minutes to bust this over an hour. Uh, but we have successfully done that. So, I'm um, going to enjoy looking, looking forward to uh, chatting with you guys in the description. Um, I would do, like, some, like, questionnaires and whatnot for, uh, for stuff. Like, what's your favorite such and such that I've done? Uh, there is a questionnaire or a, uh, a survey type thing uh, that I think will be on Necrostevo's coach interview. It's in the fan discord. Uh, if you want to leave me like some, some, some comments or something like your favorite this and that. Or just generally say, hey Cooper, you're, you're a pretty okay person. And, you know, I don't totally hate your guts even though you, you, you resort to some, some silly stuff on occasion. There's a, there's a form for that. And maybe some of you will just, you know, still be like, Cooper, you're awful. I hate you. You should go die in a fire, which is probably a good place for me to die because I am an ice type. So that would be super effective. But anyway, um, I believe we're done. So with that, I'll have our, our outro take us away. Uh, I will be seeing you guys again sometime, hopefully in the next month or so. So we're not going away. We're not quitting YouTube. We're not quitting Pokemon. But uh, this will be the last GBA match that I upload. Uh, again, check out Necrostevo next week, and uh, hopefully you'll be rooting on the Jasmine still uh, as they go up against another division rival with the form of the Giantes. So, see how that one goes then. See you guys in the future for another league, another team, and maybe some other stuff too. Or maybe not, but hopefully so. Later days. <laughs>